Hey guys, Brian Lebo from Lebo Guide Service. I just wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up video uh, to the video that I posted concerning Humminbird and Sonar Chart Live. Now, as I explained in the video, in order to get Sonar Chart Live to work with your Humminbird, you need to be need to be able to hook your Humminbird up to something called a Sonar server. Um, I managed to hook mine up to Sonar server. I'm, I'm fairly pleased with the with the outcome. Um, some of you probably are wondering, like, why don't you use Auto Chart Live. I love Auto Chart Live. The problem with Auto Chart Live is it doesn't adjust for tides um, automatically like Sonar Chart does. So I wanted to show you the results of, of some of the charting that I've done over the past couple of weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down and I'm going to turn on Sonar Chart. Uh, let's see. So in our chart live, there we go. So this is some of the charting I've done, just to give you an idea. Regular map, so in our chart. Um, I'm going to talk about navigation real quick. What's critical um, with navigation, obviously in a in a marine environment, is that the tide's always changing. Uh, there's a a shortcut between the little satilla, little satilla's right in the middle there. And it's called Fancy Bluff Creek. And I've used Fancy Bluff Creek uh, as a shortcut at high tide. But until I got Sonar Chart Live, I wanted to know exactly what it looked like at low. Now, I won't go through here at like dead low. I did it once, it wasn't fun. But what I'd like to know and to help me to navigate is coming through this particular body of water at. Um, you know, an hour, maybe two hours after um, low tide. But as you can see, big difference here. So this before actually really wasn't that charted. Even some of these smaller spots where you could see that there's some depth contours. I believe I did the majority of the uh, the uh, charting through here because what Sonar Chart Live does is when I get home and it gets hooked up to my um, my Wi-Fi again, my iPad, it actually transmits this data. And it's okay. But when I turn on my sonar chart live, the, the actual views that I've, uh, or actual sonar uh, images that I've captured, it, it gives you a really good idea what the bottom looks like at low tide. Another advantage here, I'm going to show you a little spot uh, kind of a dangerous shoal here uh, on this corner. Now you'll see right in the middle there's this marking. Um, let me close that out. Shoaling, right? I actually put that there. So I have seen I think f three or four boats at on big moons just up on this thing and I mean dry like they ran straight into it because when you actually look at the the regular chart the sonar chart live chart it looks like you know you can kind of cut uh, just to the inside of that little marker that I put there um, now of course that marker is available to anybody that uses uh, Navionics with the community edits uh, but what you wouldn't know is at low tide you don't want to be cutting on the inside of that thing. Um, of course I charted this at, at high tide and it automatically adjusted uh, for depth. Um, let me point this little center part out here. When you lose sonar on the bottom, so I'm not running, I'm running a, a, a transducer on the transom. Sometimes you lose sonar and you get stuff like this. I don't know how to fix it necessarily uh, it's just kind of something that I've dealt with um, but as you can see I'm going to take you down to this one little other little spot here and I'll show you exactly what is great about fishing with this so this is called um, croaker point uh, as you can see there's really good uh, depth contours here um, this is a spot that I, I like to fish uh, every now and again. Uh, but if you actually look at the, the regular Navionics chart, that's what it looks like. 
Now, mind you, it didn't look this good until after I started charting it and sending it back to Navionics, but look at the detail there. Um, I've used it on an, this particular chart on a number of occasions to, to, to pick up quite a few uh, reds and sea trout. So, um, if you guys have any questions, uh, post them up in the comments below. Um, I'm more than willing if you know some other tips and tricks concerning Sonar Chart Live or you just want to learn more about Sonar Chart Live and how to use it with a hummingbird. If you have like a Simrad or a Low Rance, um, you have the ability to, without the aid of the Sonar server, hook your Simrad or Low Rance, and of course we're talking about recently produced units, through Wi-Fi and being able to transmit data like this. So. You, you don't need anything extra special. You just got to know that it's available um, and then know how to turn on Sonar Chart Live. But uh, like I said, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know some other whiz-bang trick with this thing, um, definitely let me know. Uh, I'm totally just kind of learning this particular tool. I think it's indispensable. Um, I don't like going into areas, and I'm not I'm not typically the person that, that goes into areas at full send, if I unless I know what's there, uh, because I've seen a lot of people uh, end up up on bars, and e even up north where I'm from, people end up smashing into rock piles and losing the entire motors and whatnot. Um, but anyways, post up in the comments below. I'll say that one <laughs> the last time. Um, if you have uh, any uh, any other questions, obviously post them up there. I'm Brian Liebel from Liebel Guide Service, Tight Lines. Stay safe out there.